Hey everybody, welcome back to another playlist video. Um, in this video, I'll be showing what um, albums I've been listening to this past week. I did the same thing last week. You guys seem to like it, so um, I'm going to keep on doing them every Saturday. Um, but before I um, continue on with the video, I'd like to make a couple of announcements. One, thank you to all... Thank you to all the new subscribers and viewers that have come to my channel. And thank you to Dan from Cassette Mayhem. I'm Thank you so much. I can't thank you enough for, for giving me a shout out video. And um, and that brought in like, I, I think I now have 36 subscribers. Literally two days ago I only had 27, now I have 36. Nine subscribers in a day and a half. So thank you so much Dan for giving me that shout out. And thanks to all of you for checking out my channel and and um, subscri subscribing. I can't thank you guys enough. You guys are awesome. You, I, I just can't thank you enough. And also, before I continue with the video, I'll, this is not an original idea. Um, I was inspired to make these playlist videos by an awesome guy called Frankie. And I'm giving him a shout out in this video, and I I think you should check him out. Check him out. His cha his channel name is called Karabi Crew J. Um, he's a huge fan on. Uh, he's a huge metal collector. He collects a bunch of hard rock and metal. Um, he's mostly vinyl and CD. A little bit cassette, but mostly vinyl and CD. He's a huge Choir Riot, John Karabi, Megadeth fan. Allison Chains fan, so, but he's an awesome guy. Check out his channel. His channel's name is Karabi Crew J. Check him out. Check out Frankie. He's awesome. Okay, so, and I thank him for for inspiring me to do these videos. So, now back to the video. So, um, I'm gonna show you what I've been listening to this weekend. We're gonna start off with the one I was listening to um last weekend was this. Motley Crue's Steer of Pain, the follow-up to, to Shout Out the Devil. Now, um, alright, this is an original CD pressing from 1985. Um, so, I'll give you my background on this. When I first listened to this, I was kind of disappointed. Um, I was... Uh, I was introduced to Motley Crue for for um from Shout Out the Devil, so I thought this would be um so I thought the follow up like this. Ooh, this is gonna be Shout Out the Devil Part Two. I'm gonna check it out. But on first listen, um, and just so you know, I didn't listen to this for the first time last week. I the first time I ever listened to this was like a year ago, but um so after listening to it the first time, like in the summer of 2018 or the summer of 2017, one of the one of those summers, um, I I didn't like it at all. I, my favorite song on there was "Home Sweet Home" because that was the only song that I liked. There was like nothing really heavy on here. But as time went on for like the past two years, I have grown to really like this album. This album has many great stuff and and only slight filler. It's not as good as um. It's not as good as Shout the Devil, but it's still good in my opinion. Um, City Boys Blues is good, even though it kind of sounds like ACDC, not ACDC, Aerosmith a little bit. Um, it's it's a good song. Smoke in the Boys Room is a classic. Love it. Um, Louder Than Hell, one of the outtakes from from Shout the Devil, was, it was originally called um, Harder Than Hell. It came, it, it came out here as Louder Than Hell, and I love the song. It's it's really heavy. It's probably the heaviest song on here. But I, I no, I actually no. I think it's tied with another heavy song on the album. Keep your eye on the money is another great you know party song. Um, good riffs and stuff. I just wish the chorus wasn't too repetitive. They could have like chopped it down a little bit on the chorus, but that's all right. Home sweet home. Um, the big kid. I. I still love this song. It's not my favorite song anymore. My favorite song is coming up later on the album, but it's 
I think it's my second or third favorite song. My second favorite song would be Louder Than Hell. That would be third. What's my what's my favorite song on here? Well, we'll get to it. But Home Sweet Home is another great song. Tonight we need a lover. Um, another good song. I love the solo for Mick Mars in here. Mick Mars um did, kind of went down. Kind of like you know, not down, but he he stopped doing like you know, um, the um crazy guitar solos from Shout the Devil and Too Fast for Love, and he started going for more sly guitar. But this sound, this song. He has a great solo, kind of shout the devil solo, so. But the chorus is a little bit too repetitive, but it's not as bad as Keep Your Eye on the Money. I really like this song. Um, Next song, Use It or Lose It. Use It or Lose It is my favorite song on here. It's fast, it's heavy, it's it's frantic, and um, great drums from Tommy Lee. I, I just love where he, go, where, where he goes... Um, you use it or lose it. Sorry for singing right there. My voice is messed up. But yeah, this is my favorite song on here. It's quick, straight to the point, and it's awesome. Save Our Souls is... Alright, Save Our Souls is, you know, it's kind of souls down the pace. And yeah, it's a little bit of filler. It's alright. Raise, raise Your Hands to Rock, um... It's okay, but I I rather take Save Our Souls more, and Fight for Your Rights, another great, good song. Um, I say it's it's good as Keep Your Eye on the Money. Um, I just get annoyed by Vince. You know, he can't say For Your Rights. He goes Fire Fight for Your Rights. He goes so that kind of that kind of gets annoying after a while. But it's a it's a good album. Not as good as Shout Out the Devil, not as good as the masterpieces that came before, like Too Fast for Love and Shout Out the Devil, but it's still good, so um, check this one out if you haven't, and let's move on. In Big Mom's Steen Eclipse, one of the new CDs I got, I'm not going to give my opinion and stuff on this album because I already did on my last video, so check out my recent CD pickups. Um video to see my thoughts on the album and what's inside the CD here. That's what the CD looks like, but you're going to have to check out the video to see what the booklet looks like. Skid Row's first album. Um, once again, check out my, my recent CD pickups video to see what I think about the songs and to see what's inside. And Alice Cooper Trash, check out my recent CD pickups video to to hear my thoughts on it and um, what's inside the CD. Alright, so I've been listening to a lot of Quiet Riot lately, but um but this week um I just I want to get to Quiet Riot. I want to listen to some Quiet Riot again, so I've been listening to their 19, 1993 album, Terrified, but unfortunately, I don't have that on CD. I'll, I'll eventually get it on CD or cassette. I'll probably order it, order it, uh, I'll probably order it off of Discogs or Amazon, but I decided to listen to this. Quiet Riot, QR, um, QR 1988, whatever you want to call it. Um, the album with Paul Shortino after, this is the album that came after, um, um, QR3. And Paul Shortino from Rough Cut on here. And not too many Quiet Riot fans know about this. Well, the hardcore Quiet, Quiet Riot fans do, but the casual Quiet, Quiet Riot fans, no, they don't really know this. This is a Rock Candy 2012 pressing, 2010 pressing, I forget, I forget the year. But yeah, I really like this album. It... It's um definitely a big departure from QR3. QR3 was like a glam pop album. This is more like blues style hard rock with a little bit of glam put into it. But yeah, um the band went through a new lineup change for this album as well. Of course, the big departure of um Kevin Dubrow. Kevin Dubrow got fired and they hired Paul Short too. It was basically um to describe his vocal style, I would say 
He has a vocal style of Jolin Turner and Dave Coverdale. Jolin Turner from Rainbow slash Envy Monstein slash Deep Purple and and Dave Coverdale from White Snake. So but he he's a great singer. Um I gotta listen to some rough cut. I I, I haven't listened to them that much. Um even though it's not as classic as as the other um, Quiet Right albums, it's actually really good. And uh, oh, back to the lineup changes. Um, Chuck Wright, who um, who who played on QR three, he left, and uh, new bassist Sean McNabb came in, and also the guy new keyboardist on here. I forget I forget the guy's name that was on QR three, but they end up getting um the guy from Alcatraz on here. I forget his name again. I need to, I gotta remember these guys' names, man. But yeah, um, my thoughts on the songs. I say every song is good except for, um, In a Rush. In a Rush is kind of filler a little bit, but it's kind of speed metal-y. Stay With Me Tonight is kind of like white, it's, it's basically White Snake, but, it, but it's Quiet Riot. It's, uh, basically, it's, um, it's kind of like... White Snake still the night, but with Choir Riot um, making make it an original. I don't have to put into words. I'm sorry about that, but yeah, it's a great song. Um, Calling the shots is another great one. Um, the chorus could have been a little bit better, but it has some great keyboard work and stuff. Run to you is one of the best power bows Choir Riot has ever made. I'm falling. Yeah, it's kind of, it's poppy. It's catchy. It's it's kind of like you know too sugar coated. And stuff, but it's okay. King in the Hill, yeah, the lyrics are, are um, are kind of are kind of trash, but ah, uh, <clears throat> are kind of trash, but it's a it's a good song though. I like it, and it has some attitude to it as well. The Joker is another great song. Lunar Obsession, that's that's a really great song. And basically, it's an instrumental. Between, uh, I think I think the keyboardist that they brought in here was Jimmy Waldo, I think his name is. I forget. I'm so sorry. Um, but yeah, Carlos and the keyboardist Jimmy Waldo, they go, it's it's an instrumental, and it, it, it builds this great atmosphere. The atmosphere in this is crazy. Basically, it makes you feel like that you're like in, like in space or something. And then it goes into another power ballad called Don't Wanna Be Your Fool. And actually I like this more than Run To You. It's it's dark, melodic, and it has great atmosphere as well. Cup in a feel is um is kinda cheesy, kind of stupid, and it's alright. In a rush, like I said, it's kinda filler a little bit, but but um it at least it's speed melody. And Empty Promises is one of my favorite songs on here. I don't know what's my favorite song on here. It's a three-way tie between Stay With Me Tonight, Don't Wanna Be Your Fool, and Empty Promises. Uh, Empty Promises, um, love the drums from Frankie Ben Allen out here. Love the guitars from from Carlos on here, and great vocals by Paul Shortino. And yeah, it's a good way to finish off the album. And if you guys didn't know this, um, some of those... Um, Quiet Riot Greatest Hits compilations, like, for example, Quiet Riot Super Hits or Quiet Riot Greatest Hits, those CDs that came out in the 90s. Some, most of the songs in there are from Paul Shortino era, so, but these songs aren't even hits, so I, I don't even know why they're on there, but, hey, whatever, it's a great album. Let's move on to the last song, the, the last album I've been listening to this week, and that's Wasp. Inside the electric circus. Sorry, that was I was trying to impersonate the guy on the big welcome, but that turned out bad. Sorry, <laughs> but yeah, um, Wasp Inside the Electric Circus. This is a I think a 2018 repressing Madfish from Madfish. Yep. Um, comes with two bonus tracks: um, Flesh and Fire and Douchebag Blues. Um. So this is my third favorite Wasp album album of all time. Um, my first being um, my first being either Last Command or the first album. I go back and forth between those two albums, and this is my third favorite. Um, 
So this album for me, uh, it the first seven tracks are great. They're perfect. From the big welcome to I'm alive, it's perfect. Heavy catchiness and stuff. And let let me first give you my thoughts on it. The big welcome. Yeah, I know it's kind of it's kind of cringy and stuff, but I I love it because it gives you like for like a little kid to listen to this and and stuff it gives you it gives you like the idea of like oh shoot you you just bought a ticket into some crazy place inside the electric circus classics should be played in every wasp concert it's awesome i don't need no doctor great cover um wasp did a lot of great covers back in the day um paint it black the b-side that that was a great cover. The real me by the Who. They did they did a good job on it. Mississippi Queen. They did a good job. So, um, Nine Five Nasty, another single from the album. Great song. Um, Restless Gypsy is one of the few songs on here that's more serious tone. Like this song could have been on Headless Children, um, because it's not as what's it called? It's not like partying and stuff like the rest of the songs on here. Then Shoot From The Hip is another great one. I'm Alive is another serious one. About um the church groups and the PMRC that are going after Blackie and stuff. But then, like I said, the first seven tracks are perfect. Great. But then, when you get to Easy Living, the cover of Uriah Heep. Yeah, it's good. It's a good cover, but I'm not a big fan of it. But I gotta say, I gotta say though, it's better than, than the original one. And yes, I've heard the original one on Ozzy's Boneyard on the radio, and I like this one better, probably because probably because I heard the Lost version better uh, first. Um, Sweet Cheetah is another one where it's okay, but it's not as good as the other songs that came before it. Oh boy, Mantronic! What to say about this? This album, this song, is. Stupid, hilarious, awesome, and bad at the same time. The The lyrics make no sense sometimes, or just make you laugh. But the music in it is actually pretty good. Uh, just, if you haven't heard Manchark, just listen to it, it's ridiculous. Uh, King, Kingdom of Sodom and Gomorrah, uh, filler, forgettable, nobody cares. Um, the Rock Rolls On is... It's okay, but it never gets off. It, it never gets anywhere. It's not that. It's not a really good way to finish the album. And then the and then the two um, bonus tracks, "Flesh and Fire," which was the B side to Nine Five Nasty, is actually really good. And the song "DB Blues" or "Douchebag Blues," um, that song wasn't even from Inside the Electric Circus. They like they didn't even demo it or something. Um, they just came up with it um, during Live in the Raw. If you guys have that videos in the Raw. From 1987 or 88, um, they sing the song at the end, but you don't hear the complete version. This is a this is the complete version right here. Um, and I like it. It's stupid. It's silly, and I actually really like it. They did if they did more work on it, it could have made it to the album. If they made it, you know, if they if they you know plugged it in a little bit, made it more electric, it would it would have done. I think it would have turned out as a good track. But yeah. If I could change the track listing on this thing, um, here's how I would do it. I would keep the first seven tracks um, from I'm Alive, from it, from the big welcome to I'm Alive. Then, then I, w I think I'll get rid of the Easing Living cover, and I'll put in, I'll keep Sweet Cheetah. I'll keep a Mantronic for, for obvious reasons to, to give the listener a laugh, and then... And then I'll put it, and then I'll get rid of King of Solomon and Gamora, and I'll get rid of, I'll get rid of, um, Rock Rolls On, and I'll put in Flesh and Fire. And I think, I think I'll either put Flesh and Fire as the ending track, or put it before Mantronic. But yeah, you guys, comment below on, on, um, how would you change the track listing if you wanted to. So anyways, guys, that's all the CDs I've been listening to today. I mean, this past week. Hope, hope you enjoyed it. I'll keep on doing these every every Saturday. Hope you all doing safe. 
and I would I will see you guys later. Peace.